This desk, such a shithole. But you know what? I always tell myself I'm going to clean this thing up, and I never do, but I can always find whatever I'm looking for. But maybe next week I'll clean it up. As you can probably tell from uh, my previous videos, that the uh, second cover that I have over the Corvette is off. Um, in the last shop update, I talked about having to replace the clutch and going to have to remove the... Um, uh, move the Corvette out so that we can get the uh, truck up on the lift. Uh, put, replace the clutch in the truck, not in the car. Uh, replace the clutch in the truck. But anyways, uh, I did move it. That'll be part of this video. Um, but the first thing is um, I'm going to show you is uh, a campy trailer. I uh, had talked about in the last video or one of my previous videos about it maybe having to go out to um, Nebraska and pick up a camping trailer for somebody and bring it back. And I did do that. And uh, I didn't really um, take any uh, pictures of the uh, videos of the camping trailer being brought back. But I did uh, take a short video as I was showing the camping trailer to my grandson and uh, Emma, my great granddaughter, I was showing that to him and just uh, kind of showed a little video of it. But this is going to be the camping trailer that I brought back from Nebraska uh, before I took it back down to the customer. Do you want to see inside of it yeah. before I, we take it down? Is this your inspection video? Uh, no, it's just a video to show what I hold. <clears throat> Whoa. Look at these stairs. Usually they come from the bottom. Got it? Look at that bedroom up in there. We'll go up in there and look at that bedroom. Papa, what? Is this on 12 volt power? Y yeah. You can uh, turn the lights on. These are 12 or 24 volts? They're 12. Wow. Looks really bright. Does it have a battery backup? It, yeah. It's got batteries uh, in it. So, to explain to her, this section goes out. Yeah, this one goes this way, that one goes that way. Just a couple of short little clips here. Um, as you can see, there's a box on the floor and it's from uh, South Bend Clutch. Um, I've got to replace the clutch in my uh, Ram 3500. Going to do that today, even though um, it's uh, March, the weather is kind of bad. But one of the things that I've got to do is move the Corvette out, pull the truck in, and then I'll put the car uh, Corvette back in behind it. Um, we're supposed to get a storm um, tomorrow. It's still freezing. Um, we're supposed to get a storm tomorrow, rain, and then it's going to get cold and turn to snow on, uh, over the weekend. So I'm um, going to try and get this done real quickly. But anyways, I just thought I'd show that to you. Um, Cut a couple of other little things too that I'm going to throw in here. This is a spot welder I've had for a couple of years. I think I picked it up at an auction, got it for practically absolutely nothing. Nobody wanted it anymore, nobody had a use for it. But I, I went to use it yesterday and I couldn't get the thing to work. But l let me explain why I think it didn't work. 
Somebody brought me this belt guard, and the, this tab um, had been broken off. It had been originally spot welded into it, and the spot welds that they had put on it had broken off. And I was going to use that spot welder to weld it back on again, but I couldn't get it to work. And I think the reason why I couldn't get it to work was uh, because of the paint on the thing. And I didn't really want to grind all of the paint off of it just to get the spot welder to work. So um, I, I tried it, didn't work. So what I did is brought it over here to the welding table and just um, uh, spot welded it with the MIG welder. Uh, but anyways, I just wanted to show that to you, another little aggravating thing. Just a quick shot of the truck up on the lift uh, prior to me starting to take it, uh, the transmission and stuff out. I have started uh, undoing the um, yeah, drive shaft, um, but I'm going to be waiting for my grandson. He's going to come over. Um, his thing is pulling the shift tower and stuff out of the top of the transmission. He's better at taking all of that uh, um, console hardware apart uh, to get the shift tower out. But anyways, um, just so a little pre-shot of the truck up on the lift. Okay, here's the transmission out. Uh, we just took it out. Apparently, I can't really see it from the angle that I'm at, but there's some material down in there. Probably clutch uh, material. When I say clutch facing material, I mean. I wonder how that bearing. Is. That pilot bearing? Yeah. Here, hold the light. Let me see what this feels like. Not horrible. Sure made a lot of noise. The clutch. Do you have you want to grab? Is there any way? Oh, sorry. No, you're fine. I was just gonna videotape you. Do you want to grab what? That impact? No. The, if you take that other. I'll go get it. What? Oh, what are you looking for? I was going to take the, uh, the other seat, the one that folds. I was going to fold it flat and throw the clutch on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So here is a flywheel, and as you can see, it's burned a little bit. Um, I've also got residue in there, but that's to be expected. When we pull the clutch apart, um, we'll we'll see what we've Here, got. Pull this up. You want to start a new recording? Here, there's the pilot bearing on the other side. It feels fine. Yeah. Got some burn marks again. Um, we'll see what's missing. Yeah, let's pull the plates apart and see what we got here. Wasn't there... There were inserts, remember? No, these things go into there. No, I know, but wasn't there... Mm. Well, there's still material left, but it's pretty burned. It's just how the pads are contacting. No, there were. There were inserts that went on this. Look at They went in here. Oh. Yeah, they're all missing. That's probably what's in there. Put 
can take calipers and measure the new one. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what did that. Or what do you think it happened when we pulled it up? No, I don't think so. I didn't hit anything. It's just weird the way it's got that wear in it. See it? Mm -hmm. Can you see it on the camera? Are you recording? Yeah. Can you see it on the camera? Or there's a Yeah. Like it's something bounced around in there. On all of them. I wonder if it was those things. What happened to them? We have like eight feet of clutches. Okay, so here's the throw out bearings, and Matt's going to pick them up and show them to you. One that came, we were told that the SKF that's made in America was a better bearing, uh, a uh, heavier duty bearing. D show the play that's in it. Well, there's USA right there. And show the play that's in it. Now listen. I'm not sure the camera's picking it up. But then here's the Japan. No play. And it's silent. I can probably turn this microphone around in um, so that you can hear it. Start with the loud one. Nothing. And no play. I'm going to go with the Japanese one that was provided with a clutch. Now, originally I had called South Bend, and they said that they did not provide a heavier. Now, this was back when we were replacing the clutch in the 11 um, pickup. They said they didn't provide a heavy-duty one, that the, uh, the, the throw-out bearing was actually from Chrysler. <clears throat> well, the throw-out bearing that came with this is a Japanese. I'm not sure if that's the same thing as, as when I talked, uh, talked to them a couple of years ago when we replaced the one in the uh, 11 RAM. But anyways, we're going to go with the Japanese one. It sounds much better. There's no play in it. Um, yeah. Yeah, again, I'm not saying how long it's going to last. Um, uh, the throw-out bearing, before it started rattling real bad, probably only lasted 20,000 miles in my truck. Now, there is uh, 240,000 miles on that clutch so far. It doesn't look that bad, really. Yeah. But anyways, uh, we'll bring you back.
Okay, so it's the following day after we replace that clutch. Um, clutch went in good. Um, actually, we were screwing around with it for quite a while, um, thinking that we couldn't get it seated, and actually all the time it was. Um, we just couldn't get it to push in. But what we did is uh, started a couple of bolts in the, in the bell housing, and um, uh, we're able to draw it in. It, um, it just must have been a tight fit. The reason we couldn't get it to push in must have been a tight fit um, of that input shaft into the pilot bearing in the, fall, in the flywheel. So, yeah. Um, just got to go through, get everything cleaned up, uh, put all the tools away and um, get the vet back in here again and uh, get it covered up. Um, it's still a little early. I don't want to leave it uncovered um, because I probably won't be able to take it out for like another month or so. But anyways, um, yeah, we got it. Went a lot better um, this time, I guess we're getting used to kind of doing it between the two trucks, so, um, and the transmission issues between the two trucks and everything like that, so, yeah, everything is good. So, as I kind of told you in the description, um, I, I've tested the trailer. Now, I, uh, trailer hitch, uh, the fifth wheel hitch in the truck. Um, as you know from previous videos, I had discussed changing my trailer from a gooseneck to a fifth wheel trailer. And I told you one of the reasons was that I might have to go pick up that camping trailer in Nebraska, which I did. Um, drove out there and uh, picked that up. And that is a fifth wheel uh, type hitch on that camping trailer and brought that back from Nebraska. But really what I wanted to uh, try out is the trailer, my trailer, uh, to see how it um, pulled under load. And what I was able to do is I was, uh, I had to pick up a generator and a uh, big diesel fuel tank for that generator and take it down to um, kind of southeast of Pittsburgh. Um, so I, I picked up that generator and I'll throw a pick in pick over there um, of it. But I picked up that generator um, and that fuel tank that uh, is also pictured there and took it down to two locations. I had to drop the generator off at one location uh, to have some programming um, that needed to be done uh, on it at a dealership. Um, and then the fuel tank to the end customer uh, where they pulled it off the trailer and uh, set it on a pad. So um, took the generator and fuel tank down there um, and then um, had to make a trip down farther south of that area to pick up two military generators and bring them back uh, with me. Um, they're not mine, but I had to bring them back for somebody. Um, th that turned out to be a huge fiasco. Um, very tight street into um, a, a tight residential street into a wastewater treatment plant. Uh, I, I ridiculous how you have to get into the street but um, anyways I um, had issues turning the trailer around getting turned around there because there was no room to do it ended up having to get some people to move some cars so that I could back up between the pillars of a viaduct uh, which I put in the pick and pick here um, and then load these two generators and you'll see the trailer 
or one generator um, on the trailer and I'll show you uh, the second picture is going to be um, a trailered uh, military trailered generator that's on the tow truck but, but they didn't have facilities to load these generators for me at this wastewater treatment plant so we had to hire a tow truck company to come out with a boom type tow truck and pick them up out of uh, where they had been stored and put them onto my trailer and that second generator that's a military generator on the trailer you'll see there is slung off the back of a, a tow truck um, in preparation to set onto my trailer but the point of the matter is is uh, again I carry I took down a generator in the fuel tank and then brought back two generators probably the total load going down was I, I don't know maybe um, 10,000 pounds um, maybe a little more than that and the load coming back was probably around 12 13,000 pounds on the trailer and it seemed to uh, handle a lot better to me than um, it did with the gooseneck and I had said that in the previous video with the trailer being unloaded but um, yeah it did so um, let's cut that out and we're going to go into me uh, just some quick videos of me replacing uh, the chain basket on my trailer. So like I said kind of in the introduction to this part of the video what I'm doing is replace, uh, replacing um, the chain bin off of the trailer. Now I made this chain bin and it's lasted for I don't even know uh, three years about not quite three years um, but the problem with it originally was I, I built it out of that little inch and a half angle iron and it, truthfully it wasn't big enough the angle iron was big enough to hold the chain bin together but what the problem was it um, it isn't big enough to get multiple welds of the expanded steel onto it. Welding expanded steel to angle iron to form something like this is good until it gets put into kind of um, more harsh conditions and, and the, the conditions of the trailer bounce and stuff like that is pretty harsh. It, and what happens is the welds will, um, because you're only putting spot welds onto the expanded metal uh, and the angle iron, you're just doing little spots. Um, so the the vibrations bouncing of the trailer has a tendency to break those welds. Um, so the bigger the angle iron, logically the more spot welds that you can get on instead of just having w one row of spots on, on the, along the angle um, you can get multiple rows of them so that it has less of a tendency of those spot welds to break off and come apart and it is pretty harsh environment again you know um, trailers do have a lot of bounce vibration uh, jolting stuff like that to it so um, hence the bigger angle iron which I made for the international again this thing I took off of the international that I had built um, the bed for and um, because this was getting ridiculous what would happen is um, the chain uh, the chain would uh, go in between there and you couldn't pull it back out again. You'd be out on the road trying to tie something down and the chains were all hanging out the bottom through the expanded metal and of course there's sharp edges or pointed edges on that expanded metal which found their way into the links of the chain and 
um, you'd be fighting to try and get it out and trying to get chains loose. So, again, besides that, it's rusty to death. You know what I mean? It, it, pro it could be fixed. Um, logically, I could clean it up, re-weld it, and uh, repaint it, and, and put it back, but um, only to have that same problem again. So I had this, again, I'm not going to be using it right away, so I'm going to take it off and, and put that on the trailer. And here we are out on the trailer. See the spot where the rust stain is, is where I took that thing off getting all of my stuff together again all of those chains were kind of looped down in there um, the only ones that weren't were the ones that I kind of use on a uh, daily basis when I'm hauling stuff um, but it, I have a bunch of chains those are um, 10 foot chains I used to have more 10 foot chains these are standard 10 foot chains so are these, but I have taken the hook off, or the hook came off of them, uh, off of one side. I have the hooks and more pins to put back onto these. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, um, six, um, ten foot chains. Th those two are uh, ten foot chains also, but they have the larger hooks on, so that um, sometimes you, when you're trying to uh, tie down a piece of material or a machine or something that the hook on a standard um, the standard 3 8 chain won't um, fit around the fit into the machine or something so you use the bigger hooks on it and these three are longer chains I think they're 18 or 20 feet long one of them is a smaller chain too it's not three eighths it's this one um five sixteenths maybe is that what it mm, yeah it might be uh, i don't recall what it is but i i just had that because sometimes it's easier snaking that through machinery when you you're trying to get a chain through it um but I haven't used it in a long time either. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw that new one on there, um, oil and grease all of my um, binders and chains and stuff like that, uh, do the trailer too, grease the trailer and uh, um, just do some maintenance on it. But I'll kind of bring you back for short intervals, uh, uh, clips, short clips of it as I do it. So here's the trailer with that other uh, chain bin basket in it um, I had to change out for the binder I didn't have to change them out they came unscrewed at the bottom which they're not supposed to actually do um, I'll explain this some other time a regular chain binder you can screw the the hook right out of the binder part of it on these you're not supposed to be able to do it but I had three of them that did it and so I had the four that were on the international um, as long as I brought the basket over, I brought them over too. You would, uh, there's a video of them sitting on the shop floor and I just put them in here. Um, but anyways, there it is. Just a picture of the backside of the International where I took that chain basket off of this one and uh, put it onto the trailer 